What's up guys? In this video, I want to talk about Thor. Now Thor is one of my favorite characters. And honestly, I don't think the MCU has given him enough credit. The dude is one of the most powerful characters in the Marvel Universe. So in this video, I'm going to give you my top 5 reasons why Thor is overall the most powerful Avenger. The MCU has really played up Thor's goofiness, and I enjoy funny Thor, but they've also depowered Thor a lot. And I get the MCU needs characters that are more grounded, but they've also depowered Thor while upgrading Captain Marvel even past her comic book strength, so they're not very consistent with it. Let's get into the list. Starting off at number 5, Thor is beating the most powerful Avengers on the roster. Now Thor is an original founder of the Avengers, but throughout the decades, he has occasionally gotten into fights with his fellow heroes, including of course, the Hulk. Before you leave me any angry comments, yes, the Hulk is physically stronger than Thor. And the Hulk and Thor have fought numerous times throughout comics. Hulk and Thor's fights usually end in draws, and when they don't, Hulk typically wins more than loses, but Thor has bested the big green rage monster a handful of times. Next I want to talk about the MCU's current most powerful Avenger, Carol Danvers. In Captain Marvel's solo series, Carol Danvers even admits that Thor is stronger than her. Although, if Thor were to fight her without his hammer, he loses in that fight. He's even taken down Iron Man. Now after Thor comes back to life after dying in Ragnarok in the comics, pays Iron Man a visit after he realizes that Tony Stark created an evil clone of Thor. And to show Tony that he doesn't really appreciate that, he beats Tony Stark nearly to death. I mean, this was a landslide victory for Thor. He's even fought Wolverine before, and Wolverine was an Avenger at one point. Wolverine was suffering from a delusion, thinking that Thor was actually Sabretooth, and Thor didn't even want to fight him, but he kind of gets tired of Wolverine constantly attacking him, so he finally throws down the hammer, literally crushing Wolverine in one giant lightning blast. Not even the kind-hearted Vision can take him out. While Thor is possessed by an alien power, Vision tries to quickly take Thor out by phasing through him to stop his heart, but the plan goes south after Thor blasts his half-phased body with lightning, knocking him out instantly. Finally, I know the X-Men's Storm isn't an Avenger, but Thor demonstrates that not only his battle skills are impressive, but also his way with the ladies. What are you doing? Oh. Thor is able to knock out Storm with just a single kiss, I and mean, that's pretty impressive. Moving on to number 4, he knocked out the Phoenix Force. Now if you don't know what the Phoenix Force is, it's a cosmic entity. So it's basically a real god. It's a living embodiment of all life that has been or ever will be created. The Phoenix Force is so powerful, it can blow up entire planets with no effort. The Phoenix Force also likes to take on human hosts, most famously Jean Grey. So when the Phoenix is making its way back to Earth, the Avengers attempt to stop it, and the Phoenix takes out all the Avengers with ease, till there's just one left, the God of Thunder. And Thor knows he's outmatched, so he throws all of his might behind one throw of his hammer, and he lands a direct hit against the cosmic bird, knocking it out. Although not for very long. Now the reason why this one falls at number 4, and is not higher on the list, because recently in comics, it's revealed that Thor is actually the son of Odin and the Phoenix Force. Which if that's true, I think Thor should even be stronger than what they already portray him as. Moving on to number 3, Thor has the God Blast. While Thor is traveling through the cosmos, he comes across a planet that was about to be destroyed by the Celestials. The Celestials are a race of planet-sized godly beings, and they'll actually be appearing in the Eternals movie. Now, they're probably not at the level of the Phoenix Force, but they're still certainly on god level, and they're kind of a-holes. They go around just judging planets, and if the planets aren't to their liking, they just wipe out all life on that planet and start over again. So, they're that powerful. Of course, Thor doesn't like the sound of that, so he decides to fight these two gods by himself. At first, Thor was able to crack the armor of one of the suits with a blast of his hammer that was so powerful that it turned surrounding mountains into dust. And he goes inside the Celestial, wraps his belt of power around his hammer, and invokes the God Blast. A blast so powerful, it cracks the skull of the Celestial, which at this point has never been done before in comics. The blast was so powerful, it even shattered his hammer. Of course, he gets it back at the end. Coming at number two. Thor defeated Thanos by himself. Yes, the God of Thunder has gone toe to toe against the MCU's biggest bad without the help of the Avengers and won. Just think how easier the final battle in Endgame would have been if Thor was actually in shape. Noob Master. Yeah, Noob Master 69. Cool. Now, Thor's powers are upgraded due to some enhanced armor from Odin, but Thanos seemed to be also upgraded at this time too. And after Thanos, like usual, takes control of some artifacts capable of destroying all life, Thor attempts to stop him. But at first, he's defeated pretty easily. He gets that special delivery from Odin with some new threads, and Thor takes the battle up close and personal and begins to beat Thanos' face with his hammer until Thanos is thoroughly defeated. Now to be honest, I think a couple years after this story came out, Marvel retconned the story so that this was just a clone of Thanos, but a clone of Thanos is still Thanos, so I'm going to count it. Overall, Thanos is undoubtedly stronger of the two, but Thor has certainly proved that he can hold his own against the Purple Titan. And finally, coming at the number one reason why Thor is the overall strongest Avenger, the Odin Force. Now Thor doesn't always have the Odin Force, 
but he has wielded it numerous times, and I believe he currently does have it in comics. Now, the power is typically tied to whomever is the ruler of Asgard, so he should have actually had it during Infinity War, but Marvel hasn't really addressed the Odin Force. But what is the Odin Force? It's a power that was instilled onto Odin after his two brothers fought against Surtur, you know, the big fire guy, who's one of the bad guys in Thor Ragnarok. BIG MONSTER! Odin's brothers sacrifice themselves so that Odin can defeat Surtur, and after their deaths, their essence goes into Odin, creating the Odin Force. Technically, if Thor has the Odin Force, it's actually called the Thor Force. But what can the Odin Force do? Basically, anything and everything. The Odin Force allows users to time travel. It can transform normal humans into Asgardians. It can teleport an entire planet's race into another dimension, shoot foes into space, create unbreakable force fields that can cover an entire city, it can give people superpowers, it can bring people back from the dead, gives you the ability to read minds across dimensions, and project devastating blasts powerful enough to knock down cosmic entities like Galactus. So, the Odin Force is super powerful. It's so powerful, it would elevate its users far above anything the Avengers could handle. Although it does have a drawback. If it's overused, it causes its users to fall into a deep sleep. Usually this is called the Odin Sleep. Yeah, I know. Very creative. So those are my five reasons why Thor is overall the most powerful Avenger. Let me know who you think the most powerful Avenger is. But with that, I'm going to wrap up this video. Hope you guys liked it. If you did, make sure you slap that like button. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe. I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.